Hello, hello, hello. I'm just going to adjust you guys a little bit. I can't seem to do it ahead of time. So let's just get us down here to where we can see. We are going to move back up and down a couple times. So we have to adjust. Oh, there goes my iron already. Hello, everybody. Let me see. I move you guys over just a little bit. Terrible podcaster, right? Make everybody seasick. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Looking good, looking good. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Becky. Hello, Birdsong. You know, I'm just going to call you Birdsong because I just like that name. You don't get to have a real name anymore. Hello, Sue. Everybody's coming in. I have had so much fun. We're going to wait a few. Hi, Tina. Hi, Sandy. We're going to wait a few minutes and get everyone to come in like we usually do. But I was making pillowcases this week. I made a bunch yesterday. I had so much fun. I'm really glad that I bought all these blender fabrics from fabric.com because they just go so well with everything. I even, I mean, it wouldn't be me if I didn't make a mistake and mess up a project, right? So I even got a pillowcase for myself. Now this time I didn't personally mess it up. It's not my fault, but up here in the blender fabric, there's this one spot. Let's see if you guys can get it. You see that little white spot? On the inside, on the back of the fabric, it looked the same, but in the front, it was orange. Then when I started pressing it and ironing it and everything, the color just came off. So this is a fabric that I'd set aside for myself anyway, so I'm gonna keep it. Thanks, Kathy. Hi, Frida. Now, most of these fabrics have been sent to me through the, um, to one of you guys, oh, you amazing anonymous donors. I mean, I know who it is, of course, but I try not to, I, I did a little survey once and everyone kind of likes to keep themselves private. They don't need everyone to know what they sent me and stuff like that. But someone was so very generous and sent me a bunch of the novelty fabrics. So that is mostly of all the fabrics I was able to use. I even, there was plenty of this fabric that I set aside for myself, but I even made this one, which I think is just beautiful. Hello, Kay. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Anyone who's coming over from Mom and Pop, welcome, welcome. You know, I was just thinking, it would be really fun if a bunch of us crafty people that do live streams here on YouTube, if we all got together and like every now and then, it'd be, I thought it'd be fun to, everyone goes live during the day. We used to do this we used to, I don't remember where we used to do it. Might have done it on YouTube, might have done it somewhere else. But anyways, like, let's say Mom and Pop goes live at 11 o'clock in the morning, right? We all go over and hang out at Mom and Pop's. We talk, we do something, we work on a project together. And then an hour later, everyone comes over to my live stream. And then we all work on something together. And then after an hour, then we go over to, like, maybe Lisa Capen's live stream. And she's been making some really pretty ornaments lately. So we can, like, live stream hop. Hello everyone that's coming in. Hello, hello. And then we can just like have one day where we're all creating stuff together, chatting with everyone because so many of us just go from live stream to live stream anyways. I see people that chat with me here and they chat with me over at Mom and Pop. And then I see you over at Margaret Lewin's and then we're over at T Quilts. There's just so many people that just go from place to place. That's what I was thinking, Sue. Wouldn't that be fun? I have to see if I can get a hold of a few people and see what they think. At least not now. We definitely have to wait until next year. It's just a little bit too crazy to even try to discuss it now, let alone actually do it. Yes, thumbs up for me, please. If you're not a subscriber and you would like to subscribe, that would help too. But I know some of you prefer not to be subscribers, and that's perfectly fine also. Linda, yes, but now, okay, what if we were doing, if we were working like on a project, like maybe we decided uh, we're all going to make an ornament. So one day we all make Christmas ornaments or we all make similar projects and then we can all just keep working. Now you can work on one project and just do it all day long, but I do know I don't get much done when I'm chatting either. 
Hi, Helen. Yes, I did catch that just before I was. I had to, I had to turn mom and pop off because I would be watching them and get distracted, and we wouldn't get anything done today. We probably won't be here very long today, anyways. These uh, pillowcases are so super to sew. They're so super quick and easy to sew. I have set three of them aside that we're going to make today, but I want to show you what we're doing. We are doing these pillowcases. This is for a standard size, just your regular everyday pillow that you get at the store. I have mine. This is in, this pillow is actually a big fluffy one that I picked up on Amazon and it fits in here nicely. It's all nice and squishy. My daughter picked up some pillow forms for me to use the stuffing because I need to make her a bolster pillow for Christmas and it fits in this really nicely. This is just a basic Target one. Hello Jody. Oh, bright and early for you, right? You gotta have your coffee. I've been up since 5 a.m. I slept a whole like five hours last night. I'm raring to go. Some of them have a contrast flange or whatever else you might want to call it and some of them are going to be normal. If you watched the video yesterday, you have all the links to get the information on how to make your, how to cut out your fabric and what sizes you need and all of that. This is the one I showed on that video, just a simple old door one. And this time when we work on these, we are going to avoid having those threads. We don't want to see the stitching on the inside. We want everything to be encompassed, encased so that it looks nice and neat. I did do this one in the burrito method, so there are no seams here either. We are going to do the burrito method again today. Just a quick note, I mentioned it I believe yesterday, but anyone who's coming in to watch the replay, it takes about 24 hours to see the chat that comes up on the side. And anyone who has a question, if you put it into capitals, I will catch it. Kathy, I see yours, and I'll answer that in one second. So if you need me to see something, you guys keep chatting on the side and having your little chat conversations, and that's fine. But I don't want to miss any questions. Now, it doesn't bother me sometimes. So this animal print, yes, it goes mostly like this. And I also had another one where I did that. I did not catch it when I was cutting it. I have a Buzz Lightyear one. And as you can see, basically, you're not going to have a buzz going in the right direction. I have seen some store-bought pillowcases that are the same way, so it doesn't bother me too much. If it were words, I would definitely want words to go the right way. But if you think about it, it all depends too. Now, let me see, if, if this bird was right side up, right, and you put your pillowcase opening on the left, if you put it on the right, then he would end up being upside down. So in actuality, it all depends on which way your pillow is going to sit on your bed. So whether you sleep, like I put all my openings on the right hand side. I just sleep in a twin bed so it doesn't matter too much. And the rest of them, I think I did okay on the rest. Like I said, I was just cutting them right off the bolt like you're supposed to, so I wasn't really looking at them too much. Like this one, they have everything going everywhere, so that's good. I think that if you're really particular about that, you need to watch at the store and see which way, if it's directional or not, and then I would avoid it. Unless you want it's something really specific. And it helps if you know which way they set their pillows on their bed. Like if you want to do a his and hers where they match in the center, then the openings will go out on the edge. Before we get going, I do have all of these pillowcases listed in my Art Fire shop. The link is down in the description. If you use the code, the coupon code 2020-2020, you can get 15% off anything you purchase in the shop through uh, December 31st, through the end of the year. So there's a lot of things listed in there. This one's really pretty. This Some of them didn't come out in the best light, like this teal one. I really like this teal with these birds. I thought that came out really pretty. And here is the one with the bears that I really like. That one turned out nice. 
yeah, buzz might bother some people with OCD. So it's one of those things too, like if I put it in the shop and you have a son or grandkid or any adult or whatever that likes Buzz Lightyear and it doesn't bother you, then you're okay. But if it bothers you, then it, you know, at least I didn't like send it to you, you know, so you can choose not to purchase it and stuff. So you'll see how it is ahead of time. I did cut one. And that's why I said when I'm cutting these, it really gets me confused sometimes when I'm cutting them. So I cut this one out and I was thinking, okay, when I took it off of the bolt, or you know, when I folded it up, put salvage and salvage, I thought, okay, well, this is going to be wrong on the pillow, so let me go ahead and turn it. But it ended up being that it's going to end up like this. So this one will one, well, like, hold on, like this. If I were to put this onto a pillowcase, it would be like this. This 100% bothers me. Buzz Lightyear flying through space doesn't bother me, but this is obvious. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into small toddler or travel size pillowcases so that I can adjust it and it goes this way. So it does, oh, I mean, I know a lot of people are OCD about things. A lot of things don't bother me, but some things do. It's very nice material. A lot of it, is, I'd say it's very good quality material. Some of it is, let's see, we got what we're going to be working on, I have some Robert Kaufman fabric. I have these cute animals. Then I have at the barnyard. And this one is high fashion fabrics. Oh, Timeless Treasures. Timeless Treasures, if you're looking for novelty fabric, Timeless Treasures and Robert Kaufman does an amazing job with them. And then I just had this fun fabric. I don't know who it's from. I, it didn't have salvages or anything like that, so I'm going to make that also. Now, I know some of you have already made pillowcases. You've done the French seam. You've done it without. Some of you have done the burrito method. Some of you haven't. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how. Let me see what I got. Let's make the moo cows. Once you, once you get the fabric cut out, like sewing these, it's really like a 15 minute process. It takes me probably more to cut out one, but I don't know how long it would take to cut out one because I made like 16 of them. Yeah, so I just, if my directional fabric is wrong, as long as I'm just like, I pulled out a whole bunch of fabrics, I pulled out like 25 of them and then narrowed it down. And then since I wasn't making a pillowcase for anyone in particular, so it didn't matter if I just went ahead and pulled that fabric and left it for another project. Because you're cutting such a large piece, this is like 27 inches. So I have my salvage here. Let me zoom you guys out a little. Okay, so I have my salvages here and I have my fold over here. So when it came off of the bolt like this, then I went from here to here and it's like 27 inches. So if I decided that I couldn't use this, that's a lot of fabric still. That's what, like three quarters of a yard or more to go ahead and utilize for another project. You can do a lot with something like this if you made a little oops. And I did go with the two and a half inch for the little flange, the little accent on the cuff. So it's going to look like this. Now you can use any size you want on these. You can, let's see, if you wanted a little bit less, you can go ahead and cut this in half so that you would only have a little slight accent instead of the big one. Maybe cut it at one and a half inches to be sewn in or two inches. Some people like to stitch this down on their pillow, but I like to have it loosey goosey like this. I like, it gives the kids something to hold on to and play with. If you use like something silky or satiny on here, it'd be really fun for those kids that are tactile. It would give them something to hold on to. And the same thing with the cuff. My daughter liked to suck her thumb and we called it nummy and up. So if she had something nice and soft and silky, she could hold this pillowcase and suck her thumb and nummy up to it and all that. I did go with the nine inch cuff, which folds in half to four and a half inches. When sewn in, it's four. But you can use any size you want, really. This is totally adjustable to you. 
putting it together is I'm gonna say this a lot but it really is super simple I'm just getting stuff out of the way when we set this up you kind of have to think a little bit oh that's wait one more thing where is my pillowcase yeah, a decorative stitch. I was thinking the same thing. If you want, in old other pillowcases I made in the past, I went ahead and top stitched right here between the cuff and the little flangey contrast accent strip just because I wanted it to hold that down. It's not necessary, but if you wanted to, you could put a decorative stitch right along here in a nice contrast, and that would be nice. People do the embroidery on the names and stuff like that. I don't have an embroidery machine anymore, so that changes all of that up. I've also done applique letters and had a plain pillowcase and applique onto here. You can, if you buy a yard of this dragonfly fabric, it takes like three quarters of a yard to make this pillowcase, right? So then you can buy a yard of this purple. So then your next pillowcase, you can put purple here and you can put the dragonfly up here to accent it. That way it would give you that little bit of I like to buy a little extra fabric in case because Joann's doesn't always cut things straight. A lot of times when you get the salvages, you see it coming off the bolt. And a lot of times the salvages will be folded like that. So you know you're not getting the right amount of fabric that you need because nothing was set up nice. So make sure you have everything all lined up pretty when you go to cut it. I did notice making these. You'll see them in my Art Fire pictures. I put them up this morning. I did not have time to press the pillowcases again, but these guys, they get wrinkly really quick. As I fold them up, it leaves that little fold in it like that. So it showed up in all of the pictures. Yeah, they, they don't always iron things. You're right. You could also put right along the top of here without sewing it down. You could put a decorative trim on here and that top stitching would keep this part from doing anything weird in the wash. Now I've noticed for most of mine, I don't have one here with the trim on it, that I haven't had a problem with this, especially if you make a little bit of a smaller one and it's not quite so big. But it's really fun to go to Joann's or whatever fabric store you're at, the quilt store and stuff, and just find different fabrics that go well together. Because if you want, you can make this entire thing one color. I would still cut all of this in this purple and then add a cuff in it. I, I don't like the way it looks if you just had the whole pillowcase with no cuff. I think you really need to have the cuff on there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead. Has, how many of you guys have done the burrito method? You guys familiar with that or do we have some people that haven't done it yet? Oh, I gave up on ironing clothes a long time ago. Kathy, you've done the burrito? I think it's just a really great way to do it. And it kind of sounds a little confusing at one point, but it really isn't. I have to take my bed off my machine to have room. Now my regular cutting mat, when I was cutting fabric, I have, you guys have seen it in my pictures, I have this basic Oh, it's what 18 by 24 inches from Fiskars and it just wasn't quite big enough for me to to cut out the fabrics I couldn't think enough to fold everything properly to easily cut it because I tried that in the past and it didn't work many many years ago I got lucky and I was able to use a coupon at Michaels and this cutting mat is 35 inches this way and 23 inches this way but it comes in three pieces so I thought that was really nice. I can hook them all together and this gave me enough room to work on and trim up everything, the pillowcases and stuff as I was going. So you need a nice wide workspace or long workspace to give yourself enough room to do this. I just work on it in sections and just move it down as I go. Otherwise I have to take, whoops, press buttons on the computer. Otherwise I have to take it in section. I'd have to take my sewing machine down and I'm not happy with that. Yeah, I think putting their names and stuff on it is a really great way to do it. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with our cuff. Now my cuff has not been pressed or anything. It's open wide like this. 
You can put, do the sports teams and put the sports teams like the New York Giants and stuff like that on it. If your grandkids, kids, nephews, whatever, play on a, a baseball team or something like that, you can always put their nickname or their jersey number and stuff on it. So my cup is right sides up. And it's counterintuitive to what we all do in quilting and stuff, but my fabric is also going to be right sides up. Because what we're going to end up doing is we're going to, when we're all done, we're going to roll this up like this and we'll fold this over and then we'll sew it. Now, your fabric, when you cut it off the bolt, is anywhere from 40 to 42 inches. There are going to be salvages. Now, with this method, I just take my fabric and I line it up. I like to take it and line it up so that the edge of my cuff is just a little bit in. Can you see just a little bit in from the salvage there? That gives me a little bit on my salvage. Do you pre-wash the fabric for shrinkage? I do not pre-wash my cotton fabric, but if I was using something like a flannel, I would definitely pre-wash that because that, that gets really a bit wonky. But the cotton fabrics, I like them to be, I like them to still have that sizing in it to be nice and crisp. It's easier to work with. Uh, it's even though this leaves creases it's less wrinkly and it makes a better presentation when I give it to them I don't think that regular cotton shrinks enough to make a pillowcase to be wonky But when you're using flannel that stuff shrinks in weird ways, so I would be really careful with that You can make them from minky you can make them from satin and silk and t-shirt material You can make a pillowcase out of anything I would imagine I don't think I'd want to sleep on one if it was denim, but you can do what you want. I would say if you're kind of curious to Google it and look like on Amazon, and if Amazon sells a Minky pillowcase or Etsy does, then you're good to go. I haven't worked with Minky too much, but I think I'm making a pillowcase out of Minky would be perfect because it's nice and soft. And sometimes, even if the person isn't going to sleep on it, it could be just more of one of those extra pillows they put up against their headboard and stuff like that. So when I work on this step, let me make sure you guys can see me. I'm going to go ahead, you can use pins and stuff, but I like to use the clips because I'm going to put them on and take them off a few times. I just like to, since I don't have enough room on my table, I just make sure everything's laying flat. I don't want to stretch or pull anything. And just as I'm working my way down, I'm going to clip. Both of these fabrics are right sides up. The cuff is on the bottom. A novelty fabric is on top. Oh yes, Stephanie, I would definitely use denim for like a regular square pillow and stuff, but I don't know if I'd put a pillowcase. I wouldn't use a pillow out like that, like a, a bedroom pillow out on the balcony, but you, you could for sure. And I'm just going to keep clipping all the way down. This way I know some people start at the middle, but you kind of have to fold it when you got Part of it folded right here when it comes off of the bolt but I just kind of let the this left half is just scrunching up all over the place I cut mine okay so here was I was doing my this fabric my blender is 108 inches wide backing so I would fold it down to the nine inch mark and I would cut my first cup then I would take the second cup and lay it down so you know every time you cut from a previous cut one, the ones after just kept getting bigger and bigger. So I'm gonna have some extra at the end. It doesn't bother me, I'd rather have a little extra and then use it for my scrap projects than to come up too short. I just pin it all the way down to this salvage here. Now I have a contrast cuff I didn't press this one in half ahead of time, shame on me. But these, you go ahead and press these in half. Just wait for my iron to heat up. Denim is definitely durable, that's for sure. I do like denim in a lot of things. I've made picnic blankets and stuff like that for denim. I'm just gonna pop over here, let me grab my iron. This is just like when we're doing our binding and stuff. We just have to get it pressed. Match the raw edges, wrong sides together. After doing these pillowcases, I realized that this is my main ironing board. I have one of those metal stand ones, but it, oops, sorry, it needs a new cover on it. I've come to realize that I definitely need a larger ironing board. This is not enough.
Oh yeah, I, I I am I am so much into the totes right now. I want to make so many tote bags. I have so many ideas of the things that I can make with a tote bag. I just don't have the time at the moment. So I'm just letting the ideas brew and I write them all down in a notebook. Because otherwise I'll forget. Yeah, because you have denim on the brain right now, Stephanie. I don't blame you. Now, I'm going to take my fold, my raw edges up here. The fold is down here. And this is how exactly how it's going to look on the pillowcase. So that's easy to figure that out there. And I'm going to line this up with my red cuff fabric just so the edge lines up a little bit to the outside and just keep going through. This works out pretty good. I mean, I have a large table, but as I said, I'd have to remove my sewing machine. So it works out really well. I'm not a pin person, but when I was doing this with pins earlier, because I made, I made all of them, all those pillowcases I did in assembly line, I cut them all out. Hello, quilting for the soul. I cut them all out and then I went and put them all into the burrito sausage and then I sewed them all and I just went through an assembly line and I did each step on like all 12 or 16 pillowcases, however many I made. Now these, my accent strip I cut just perfectly so it's going to end up right down there. Okay, now this is going to be our burrito method. But yeah, so I don't use pins that much but I find that it works really good for this project and use a lot. You're not, I'm going to put more clips on than what you see here. Just this small amount is just not going to be enough to keep everything all organized and nice and tight together. So I'm going to take, this is the end. I'm going to be moving them right sides together. I'm just going to fold it up a little bit. I want to stay out of this area because we're going to be sewing on this edge. And I just fold it up a couple times like that. And then I roll it up. They call it the hot dog, the burrito, the sausage. And I want to roll it up nice and tight up through here because I'm going to take this edge now. I get poked with the pins every time, Kathy. No matter what project I'm doing, I get poked, I bleed, all of it. I'm going to pin this side or clip this side first just so it lines up. And you want to make sure that the two edges here line up from the one on the bottom. Then I can just lay it down flat and I can start in the middle. Just kind of clip them all back in place. It is now holding one piece of the cuff, my pillowcase right side up. I've got the, if I'm using the contrast, and then I've got the other cuff. Did that make sense to everyone so far? Let me know if I've lost you anywhere. We don't want to lose anyone. And I'm going to add a bunch of clips in here as I go. I probably put a pin every inch, inch and a half when I was pinning this. Just because I wanted it to definitely stay together. I didn't want anything shifting. When I just used a few, even with the walking foot, I found that it, I found that it still shifted a lot. And I ended up with a little bit of a, a little wonk at the end. And I, you know I love wonky, but not on my pillowcases. The Wonder Clips are lifesavers. I have a bunch, but I'm thinking I probably want to get some more so that I, I do so much assembly line stuff that it's nice to have a whole bunch of them. Just keep pinning all the way down, clipping all the way down, moving them as you need to. Frida, it is super easy. I'm just, I've got three pillowcases cut out, so I'm going to go through this one a little quick to get us going. And then when we get going on the next one, we'll probably slow down a little. I know I talk too fast and I move too fast. That's why I want to stop. Is everyone okay where we are right now? I don't have pins at hand. I'm sorry, I have to keep drinking. I have the windows open everywhere in the house, but I've closed this one because... If you guys have been here for a while, you know what the traffic sounds like, and it's even worse if I open up the windows. Yes, Jody, you never have enough. Santa can bring a bunch of them, because some of the packages, you only get 10 or 20 of them in them. I need like 100, 100, 100. Okay, we're good. I'm going to go ahead. They are expensive, Becky, but I find that for simple projects like this, if you go to like 
the witch.com apps and stuff like that, those Chinese places, you can get the generic version ones, and they work really, really well. I like these, the yellow ones and the blue ones were sent to me, and they're the name brand ones, and they have a really tight spring on them. And I like to use those for like my zippers or something I needed to hold it tight. This is okay. These work perfectly fine. The generic ones, there's nothing wrong with them. I just find that these are actually tighter. And I'm only going to guess that they're the name brand because they don't say anything on them. You can't tell one brand from another. Poor Frida, all of her messages keep getting held for a second. I'm not really sure what happened there. Oh yeah, buy some more in case they break, because sometimes when you're clipping them like this, they might fling and snap. All right, so now we're gonna take it to the sewing machine. I'm gonna move over here. I know the volume's an issue. I'm gonna be working on that after I said at the beginning of the year, I've got some plans for a microphone. Jody, okay, don't be a smarty pants and all. I know how that has to go and it's the best way to do it, but I'm not gonna sit here every time I don't have the patience to constantly move it. And you know what happens to me, and this is why I'm being a smarty pants, is because, on what end? Carol, what's the matter? Oh, oh, on Frida, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe she got considered, um, maybe she got considered, got, marked as a spam by accident or something it should correct itself the next time she comes on but you guys my moderators are being amazing and they're going ahead and getting everyone accepted so everything's doing good right but okay so jody i will be really careful and i'll make sure all of them are facing down the flat sides down right and then when i get to the sewing machine i end up flipping it like this and i sew from the wrong end anyways so it's 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 just easier for me to just pop them on however I want, and it just works. Now, okay, so this is the part of think smarter, Robin, not harder. You know how I get, always move you guys so that you get seasick? Watch this. I can move my sewing machine. It's one of those life's little duh moments that you forget that, hey, I can do things the easier way, right? I just gotta move my foot pedal. Okay. There we go. And now, okay, the sewing machine's gonna be closer to you all, so it could be louder. But this is gonna be super simple sewing. This is a great project for kids for people that are just learning how to sew and everything. It's not too complicated at all. So now I'm going to stitch this at a quarter of an inch. The biggest thing is, is make, the iron always goes off. Maybe if you're working with some kids or if you're having any issues with this roll getting in your way, you can put a few pins just down here to keep this rolled up piece out of your way. If you don't bring it up too close, you should be perfectly fine. I have my machine set at a 2.0 stitch length because somebody always wants to ask that question. It's just automatic when I put it on the quarter inch foot. That's how it goes. I've been giving Sue Smith a list of things she needs to ask for Christmas. I'm working on her. Don't worry, guys. I got her. She got, she's got kids. They can, they can pick her up some stuff. Right, Sue? I think any of us who have adult children, a lot of times, like my kids never know what to buy. They finally, after all of these years, like 12 years, they finally realize to just buy mom a gift card and she can buy what she wants throughout the year. I have to actually finish spending the money on last year's gift cards. Okay, so a quarter of an inch, this is gonna be our first seam. If you want, you can make it a little bit wider. This one specifically doesn't matter that much. So if you're having issues with the quarter inch, you can go for a three eighths or a half an inch. Just remember it's gonna make everything that little bit narrower. And it's, it's not that big of a deal because we're doing, right now what we are sewing is this seam right here. So we're gonna sew it because it's the burrito method. We don't have any exposed seams here. You don't have anything extra. You're not like sewing and flipping. This is just one stitch, one seam on this section and we're good to go. I get my bucket. Excuse the sewing machine if it's loud. 
You all know how it is. And I can't see the chat anymore because you guys are behind my sewing machine. So you guys are fine. You're chatting on your own. If you have another question, just ask it again or hold on until I finish sewing this one. I put, I throw this. Now this is the part if you're using pins that you can have some issues. I take this and I throw it over my shoulder. So I throw this one over my left shoulder and that allows me to have like a little bit here that just feeds through the machine. You can put it in your lap, but I always get it stuck on the table and the clips get hooked on the table. The pins will stab me if I'm not careful, so. And if you put the pins in this way, I guess they won't stab you, but I, I never think to do that. Here we go. A walking foot does a really good job here. I put mine on and did them before, but mine makes the sewing machine that much louder. Returning to sewing with COVID. Where's my location? I'm in Cape Coral, Florida. I am south of Tampa. I am on the Gulf, I'm on the Gulf side, so it's on the western side of Florida, but the eastern United States. Uh-oh. Someone's getting an eye roll from Santa. But the walking foot will hold all of these layers together. Now this Juki sewing machine is amazing. It can go through 12 layers of denim or eight layers of denim. I don't remember, the Crafty Gemini tested it out, but it's more than I ever go through. So going through one, two, three, four, five layers of fabric, this does really well, but it's really noisy. So I'm just gonna go ahead with my regular foot. We're gonna trim everything up afterwards. You saw we left the salvages on. It's easier to leave the salvages on now and trim later because you always end up having to trim. Then I just pull a little bit off of my shoulder. Remember, if you're sewing with pins, don't sew over your pins. It's bad for your machine and you can get shot in the eye because you don't want to shoot your eye out this close to Christmas, right? If your machine is adjustable for speed and you're working with your a new sewer, whether it's an adult or a child, you can always turn the speed down a little bit. I definitely have mine all the way up to the rabbit and I put my pedal all the way down. When I only had a few clips or a few pins, I would get little tucks that were here and I'd have to constantly smooth the fabric down. But since I'm putting these about every two and a half inches, two inches, I don't have that problem. And you just have to watch out for the other end. I have a wall right there so I can only do so much. If I were to be doing a lot of something like when you chain piece and you want to kind of have that waterfall going, I'd have to pull it against the, away from the wall. My fabric is shifting a little. I can see a little bit of the green popping out, but it is going to be perfectly fine. That little probably sixteenth of an inch isn't going to matter. Just readjust so it doesn't go crazy. I'm only going to sew to where my salvage is so I don't sew. I don't want to have to seam rip this part off because I'm going to save this. That was it super duper fast. Yeah, Michelle, they are super easy. I don't use, oh, because just in case you might miss removing a pin, that's smart. Okay, let me move this out of the way. When I first started doing these, I was like, um, I don't understand. How am I supposed to do this? But you just pick an end. Let me make sure I've got everyone. I didn't miss anybody. Yes, clear water. That's not too far away. Okay. Yes, it's super long because... Let me see. This is, this is the cuff, so this is going around the pillow like this. 
So this is actually the whole thing. So when we're done, we're gonna fold it up and stitch like this. So it's actually not as long as it looks. Need a walking foot and a rule foot. I'm going to see, oh Santa. yes, now's the best time. I'm gonna take it from this end. As I said, this end I didn't sew all the way and I don't wanna pull at those stitches. Doesn't really matter. It's gonna work out either way. Jukies come in different price ranges, Kathy. You can find them for three. I know this model has a $300 version, and then they go all the way up to uh, you need to take out a small loan. Pat, if you're just making it for a standard pillow, you're pretty much going to need, I would say, I, I'd say follow. I wouldn't go any shorter than when you're cutting that first piece off the bolt 26 inches. When you go to the store, I would buy whatever your main part of the fabric of your pillowcase is. This one you need to get three quarters of a yard. I wouldn't go any shorter than that. You're welcome, Kathy. I wouldn't go any shorter than that. But the cuff, you can vary depending on how much cuff you want hanging off your pillow. So now these, as you can see, let me shake my pillow down. I have... The pillow comes right up to about here on the cuff, so you've got about mostly the whole cuff. There are pillowcases that have a special insert that you can tuck in. It's a piece of fabric that covers it up so the pillow doesn't slide out. I don't do that because it works fine like this. I don't worry about that. I don't care if my pillow can be seen and my pillow never slides out. Every pillow you buy at the store is going to be different. I do have a little bit extra probably about an inch, inch and a half here, but you know, when you lay down on it and it squishes out and stuff, plus you don't want it super tight on your pillow because it's hard to get it in. The one that I made before, wherever she went to, the Dora one is super tight. So I have to, I have to grab the pillow and force it in like that. So if you've got little kids that are making their own bed, you want to make it easy on them. If you want them to work for you, you don't want them to struggle. Okay, so, right, so we're going to pull it out. Just going to grab it here. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to take this cuff, and you see how it's right sides out now? And this is going to turn right sides out while I'm pulling out the rest of the pillowcase. And you just keep going down. I don't even worry about it too much. Just hold it right here maybe by the, the little flangey thing and just keep pulling and pulling, 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 pulling. I think if you're gonna make a pillowcase, you may as well plan on just buying a yard of fabric. What are they like? Joann's, you can get them on sale and use a coupon. If it's just for a pillowcase, I don't think it has to be. If you're making a pillowcase for your grandkids or your young children, I don't think you need to use the ex motorcycles. I don't think you need to use, hi Cheryl, I don't think you need to use the most expensive fabric. Now, I haven't been to a quilt store in a while, but about six years ago, my quilt store was $15 a yard. So you figure you're going to spend $20, $25 on a pillowcase. Then you're going to have extra to make. You might have missed it. I don't know if you saw it at the beginning, but if you buy a yard of the fabric, that quarter yard that you're going to cut off down here at the bottom, you can use it for the cuff on the next one. So I can make a red main body and then just have the animals up at the cuff. Oh. All right, my chat's disconnected. Hold on. Okay, we're back. Okay. Internet's being goofy. So now we have everything. Let me shake it out. And as you see, um, this is the end that I left all the extra on. So I'm going to be trimming that up. Before we trim this up, we want to give it a nice little press. Yes, very inexpensive. Old sheets, sheets you can pick up at the thrift store. A lot of times those are practically brand new. I've seen some people where they piece the top like a quilt. So they've used like squares and stuff. I, I don't know, I don't know how well that would wash up because if you used if you surged your pieces together, I think it'd be fine. But I'd be worried that the backside could fray or something. But you could put a very lightweight fusible interfacing on it and it would protect all the seams from fraying so you could piece it. Okay, so I've got 
this when I lay it down I'm going to just going to make sure that my little accent piece is laying flat and I want to press this one to start with from the back I'm not going to press up here at all this is going to get when you fold it and put it in the closet or you're shipping it or something this is going to get compressed but I don't want to put a crease up there I just want to go ahead and press this fabric so that it is away from the seam this is a good time for some good bit of steam so as you can see already there is nowhere where you can see any of our stitches they are doing that burrito method it's all hiding in there I just now of course I am probably going to cause some issues on the other side I'm going to press from the other side also and that'll give that a nice little look you can press up into your cuff like I said totally up to you it's not like it's a deal breaker if you accidentally pressed all the way to the edge because you were watching a Hallmark movie and you weren't paying attention then it's going to be perfectly fine some people wash these before they give them away and some people don't yeah I internet's being goofy I noticed that over at mom and pops the, a lot of the uh, the wheel of doom now on this side I'm going to go ahead I'm going to watch here it's always going to be little threads it just it is what it is cotton fabric tends to fray of course so you just pick them off as you go but I'm going to make sure that when I press from the back that I didn't press any seams any folds or tucks into this so I'm just going to kind of you know iron this way this is one of those things where we're not doing a quilt block so I can actually iron it I can go ahead and give it that little motion see like here it's just folded over just a little give it some steam make it all nice and pretty there we go it's not that big of a deal but at this point if you wanted to do any of your top stitching or decorative stitch you want to make sure that this is all folded all pressed up nice and neat so now you can go through and if you want to you can stitch this down like I said I like it flapping you could do a little top stitching an eighth of an inch from the little our little seam here but or like okay this is farm animals well, what if I was making a valentine one I know for specifically that my juki has a heart so I can stitch a seam of hearts all the way down here and I think that would be great like if I was making this for someone I loved and I want oh grandma loves me she put hearts on my pillowcase or for Valentine's Day one then it'd be really nice like that to have that little added bit whether you did it in the red thread or you did it in the green or pink or something like that you see everything is pretty on both sides I play shuffle the tools around now at this point this is when we're going to start looking at trimming things up put my juki on one year payment use my monthly fund money to pay no interest have paid off in one year game change oh yeah a lot of them you can do sewing machine plus or something online I know they do payments and stuff that's where I saw my sewing machine they had a really good price there okay so let me see let me slide me down a little can you guys see everything When I first started doing these I was laying it on this table and I was leaning all the way over here to go ahead and trim it then I realized once again that if you list you look at what you're doing and make life a little easier I fold this up so that I can go ahead and cut from here because my table is not wide enough for me to turn the mat completely that way and either way my ruler is only 24 inches so it's never long enough Good machine is a game changer. When I went from my singer to my brother, I was like, oh my gosh. When I went from the brother to the Juki is like a big deal. Doing quilts on this Juki sewing machine is amazing. Now since my fabric is 42 inches and I really only need like 40 inches, I can go ahead and not worry as much whether, you know, I'm not going to trim so much off. I'm going to keep it to where I just have a smidge of color. I want to make sure that at no point does my salvage show up in my pillowcase so I'll probably just come up like a quarter inch or half inch I'm gonna line it up you can line it up at the top of your cuff you can line it up I have one inch right here so my green is going to line up make sure everything's looking good 
If as you're lining things up, you notice that your ruler is all the way over here, then you know you had a problem with your cuff. You just wanna make a nice clean cut that's generally straight down the side within reason. Your cuff get a little bit wonky, you can unstitch everything and fix it. If it's off by just a little, then just make sure you have a nice straight line going down here. So let me line it up. Check to make sure it looks good. I'm gonna trim off part of it, then slide it up and trim off the rest. I agree, you should buy the best quality machine that you can afford. If you're just doing this for fun, I don't think you should go into severe debt just to buy a sewing machine. Like, okay, everyone else has a Bernita. Bernitas are supposed to be great, oh, blah, blah, blah. But I don't wanna spend the money on a Bernita just to be part of the Joneses and just so I can be with everyone else. The different type of things I sew, anything you have, you know, as long as you have the best that you can afford. I saw a brother's sewing machine for $150 on Amazon. It's a nice little starter one, like the Singers and stuff. That's all you can afford. Go ahead and start doing that, and then you can save money on gifts, or you can save your birthday money, or if you start selling things, then you can start putting that money away, and then a year later, you can upgrade to a better one. Because as a starter, when you first start out, anyways, you're new, so you don't really need anything too fancy. You don't want your machine, you wanna grow into your machine, but you don't want it to be so far advanced that it's gonna take you 10 years to be able to be experienced enough to use all the parts. Although I, I bet most of us don't use all of the functions on our machines anyways, right? Okay. Then I'm gonna line my ruler up along this cut edge so that I know it's straight. And that's gonna allow me to keep cutting the rest of the way. I'm sure you guys know this, but just in case anyone listening that comes along now or later doesn't know the little tricks. Now, I do save all my salvages. This has just the tiniest, the tiniest of color on there. I don't care. I like the salvages with the words and the numbers on it. It's gonna be perfectly fine. I will take this off later on. I will put this as a wide strip so I can go ahead and put this in my red scrap bin. If it was smaller, I'd put it into my little, like I saved like these from yesterday. Well, not this one, but I put them into my colored strip bin. So that goes to the side for now. Now we're gonna trim the other side. Now, 100% believe me that talking makes this go so much slower. You can really do these really quick. We're coming up to 50 minutes and we haven't finished a pillowcase. So don't let the time that it takes us today scare you. Once you get going, you're going to be able to make these pretty quick. These are really great last minute Christmas gifts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Let me fold this up out of the way. Let me feed Miss S'moresies. She didn't wake up from her nap in time to have lunch today. So anyone who's been here for a while knows she likes to hang out with us in the craft room. By the end of the day, I have all three cats in here with me. What do I use the salvage strips for? There's a lot of, if you go to Pinterest and look up salvage, fabric salvages and stuff, there are so many projects. I have some where I've made zipper pouches you can use them to cover a regular like throw pillow. You can use them for clothes. I've seen people make uh, like winter jackets with them where you sew them onto a sweatshirt and stuff. You can make pot holders. You can make just about anything you want with those. Yeah, I think anything, anything that you, any type of sewing machine that you can afford to get you sewing, then go for it. Don't not sew because you can't buy a thousand dollar sewing machine. You can get by with a used one. Check, check out, well, thrift stores down here, because we're in a tourist area, thrift stores down here are, I've, I've seen things that I bought at the Dollar Tree in a thrift store for four bucks. So that shows you what they are down here. But I know some thrift stores up north and stuff are a little bit better. And then garage sales, because someone wanted a sewing machine, but it sat in their in their closet for four years and never sewed it. So they put it out for sale at the, sewing, at the garage sale, and you might be able to pick it up for $10, $20. Even if it's a $300 sewing machine and you pay 100 bucks for it, you're getting a good deal. Hello, hello, hello. 
All right, so both sides are trimmed up nice and neat. I didn't measure anything and say that I needed it exactly because I know with the fabric is wider than what I need. Now here's the part. Don't wait for the iron. You can go ahead and fold these right sides together. You can take it to your sewing machine or your serger, do these two seams down the side, down the bottom, bing, bang, boom, you're done. But we're going to do the French seam so that we don't have anything. So we don't have any of the seams showing like that. Sorry, I was just letting free to talk. But so for the French seam, this is when it gets a little confusing because we're our brain gets used to doing things a certain way so that when we change it up, it gets mad at us. So I have my pillowcase like it's going to go on my pillow. And the most important part to me here is lining up the green strips and the red. So I'm going to make sure my seams match up nice right there. And I'm only going to put clips in this area, but you can clip or pin all the way through if you want. So I'm going to clip on the green. I'm going to clip on the seam. I'm going to put another clip right above it. Because this is like when you're making bags and stuff and you want the front and the back to match up perfectly. It's not going to always be perfect, but if you're within like an eighth of an inch or so, it's great. Oh yeah, Sue bought, Sue bought a really funky sewing machine. Now I'm going to take this over the sewing machine. Now remember, this is the confusing part. We're going to sew from the right sides up. The wrong sides are matching. Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to stitch my quarter of an inch. Again, if you can't stitch a quarter of an inch and you need to make it a little bit larger, it's okay. We have that wiggle room in here. Your pillowcase is just going to be a little bit smaller than someone else's. And we're talking about like a quarter inch or half an inch. So I'm going to stitch all the way down here, pin as desired. I'm going to make sure everything stays lined up nice and neat. And when I get down to the bottom in this corner here, line it all up. I'm going to go ahead and pivot at this corner and sew back this way. Now I did notice in the ones that I was sewing yesterday that sometimes when I got to the end, my cut wasn't perfect. There might have been like the bottom fabric was sticking out a little bit here and then it got even. Pick a straight line. If you have to, after you sew this side, go ahead and cut your thread and even up this end. You want this end to be as even as possible. Either follow straight when you're sewing and we'll trim it up afterwards or trim it up first. Make sense everybody? Yes, pillowcases are great because I see all these things like Santa sacks and stuff and you can just use a pillowcase and use a ribbon or a shoelace or something or use the salvage that we cut off and then you can go ahead and put it on your top of your bag and close it up that way and then they have something to play with if they want afterwards. I think that works out really, oh no, hold on. I broke my table. It didn't break my table. I just popped it off. There we go. Okay. More paying attention, less chatting, right? Let me move my machine down again. A few of you have noticed that there are some black marks on my table from on my wooden table from my sewing table. I thought I could just clean them off, but they don't clean up. So what I ended up doing before you guys notice is I would already put some blue painters tape on it. It's just a little small black rubber thing and it leaves marks on my table. So I put the little blue painters tape on there. It's not pretty. I don't like it, but it serves the purpose and it works. And I also put some blue painters tape here because this piece of plastic, when it goes across here, it was scratching it up. And I didn't like that. So I put that tape on it so it would glide on there and it wouldn't scratch the table up anymore. It's okay to uh, change things up and do little things like that to keep everything going smoothly. Sorry, Jody. We'll keep talking to you though so you don't feel left out. Now I'm going to start, I am using a medium gray thread and I used that on all of the pillowcases whether they were black or blue or yellow or white or anything because on the inside, once you, oh yeah, yeah. Once you go ahead, the seam, it's going to get tucked over. It doesn't stand out that bad. Gray is a nice neutral. Black on white would probably show up a lot. So, I mean, 
I didn't want to have to change my thread with every pillowcase, and I think using the neutral gray worked out really well. Now I'm going to line up the top here. Let me get another little clippy just to hold everything out of the way. Now I have, I don't have OCD, but I do have a pet peeve. When you start stitching off of the fabric and you come onto it and then you back stitch to hold it in place, every time you trim those threads, there's always a little bunny ear sticking up. No matter how close you trim it, something else will come loose and a little bunny trip, bunny. Hi, Tracy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are getting towards the end of our pillowcase. We are almost finishing up, but you can always check the replay afterwards. We are doing the French seams. I'm at the point where I am sewing them wrong sides together in preparation for the French seam. So what I like to do is I like to go down about a half an inch. And I'm going to bring my thread to the top. And then I'm going to back stitch so that I go over the edge of the pillowcase. And that way when I clip my thread, it's going to be further down on here and not sticking out at the end of my pillowcase, driving me crazy. I'll do the same thing in reverse on the other end. Oh, magic eraser. Did I try that? No, I tried other erasers, but not the magic, magic eraser. That's a good idea, Beth. I'll try that. Thank you. You guys are behind me again. As you can see where the laptop is, I can't see you. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew down this quarter inch. Still at the 2.0 stitch length because that's what it is. If Mr. Juki sewing machine says I should sew at a 2.0, I'm not going to argue with them. This is a spot I'm just going to be careful, go a little slow because we have a lot of seams that were a lot of layers of fabric here that we're going to go through. Sometimes you might have to help it through a little bit. I may go pedal to the metal, but when it comes to that section, I slow down. So now I'm just going to stitch all the way down, and I'm going to go ahead and do it super fast, so sorry about the noise. I'm just going to adjust it as I go down to make sure I'm going to come at the same spot on both fabrics at the end. Again, if it shifts a little and you have a little fabric coming off, it's okay. We're going to trim it up. Now, all of you guys, well, most of you guys are experienced sewers, but if anyone in the future or right now doesn't know, when you're using your regular standard sewing foot, that you know that there's little lines on it that tell you where the quarter inch mark is so that you can stitch down to the little lines. For me, I don't have technical lines, but I have these little ridges right here that I know that when I get to there, I'm at the quarter inch so that I can go ahead and stop when my fabric hits there. Mine is a little bit short underneath, and I'm going to turn and pivot. Now, when I pivot, if I notice that I'm not, I have too much fabric on the right-hand side, I can just pivot back, take another stitch, and do it again. It's not permanent yet, right? You can always bring out Mr. Seam Ripper if it gets too much. So I have a little extra wedge down here. I'm going to let the fabric go off, and I'm going to aim to right about here where they meet back up again. And then I'll trim that off afterwards. For some reason, I think the way I cut it off the bolt, it was off just a smidge. Now on this end, I have a fold. I am going to go all the way up to like almost a thread from the end of the fabric on the fabric side of it. And when I get there, then I'm going to back stitch about six stitches just because six sounded good. And the machine always takes an extra and then cut my thread. So that now, when I trim my thread, it's not sticking right out at the end. Now this side with the fold, it's really not going to matter. 
the trash can. But up here, like I said, it just drives me crazy when that little bit, you know, we all have our things, right? But it, when those little two pieces of thread, let me see if I can show you. Okay, see how my thread is coming from here? A lot of times there's be just two little pieces of thread. And it also, I think if you backstitch and then if you start here and then backstitch off, it makes more of a secure seam and it doesn't pull apart there. Because let's face it, if husbands or boys and kids and stuff are putting their pillowcases on, they're not being nice and neat about it, right? All right, go back again now, machine, for a minute. Now our next step is going to be trimming this up. If you took bigger than a quarter inch seam, you want to trim it down to about a quarter of an inch. We are going to do, when you turn it around and do our final seam for the French seam, this you want this to be about an eighth of an inch, and then if you do a quarter of an inch, it's going to encompass the seam, and you're not, it's going to be all encased, and you're not going to see it. I do more of a three-eighths inch because the little threads that possibly stick out drive me crazy, and even then, sometimes they will still stick out. But I always have to have my numbers going the right way. Now, that's my little other OCD thing. So I'm going to line it up, and if my stitching isn't perfectly straight, I just want to make sure I don't cut through my stitching. If I have to do a little bit, then adjust my ruler, I can do that. And I'm going to follow that. See, I'm just taking just a little smidge off, just to make sure that if you're one of my patrons and you watched me do the pouch with the French seam, you know how frustrated I got with all the little threads sticking out. Now this I will throw away. If this were a little bit wider, I would save that for an art project, but I'm not going to. So that one's going to go. It's not wide enough for anything. Let's see. Go, Robin, go. Oh, what am I sewing? <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Okay, so let's see where we are. Did I miss anybody? Nope, we're good. Again, fold it so it's not dragging off the table and pulling on anything because you don't want it moving accidentally or for you to pull it with your your belly or your hips or whatever. And I say these things not because I think you guys don't know any better. I say these things because I I don't know any better. Now I have all of these stupid threads sticking off. And remember when I sewed it, I got a little off, so I had the bottom piece sticking out. I'm just going to trim it all up. If you guys didn't see me do this, you would never know it happened. So don't worry about it, right? The other thing I like to trim, I've tried you know, knocking off the corners and stuff here. You can knock off a little bit of a tip of it, but you're not going to take much. But this one, I do like to take the corner off and just make sure I don't have too much fabric in the seam. Because when we turn these around, give me that. We want to make sure everything's nice. And I notice these pillowcases pick up every bit of fuzz and thread that's on the table. So here we go. Now the pillowcase looks done, but we have a seam on the outside. Put our hands in. See, I think this would be real. You see nothing. I see nothing. Yeah, the threads in the bulk, those threads, Becky, they drive me crazy. I have my not so fancy little crochet hook. I am going to go in and just gently pop out these corners because we are going to stitch all along that seam that we just did, we're going to stitch along it again. Now you can do it just like this as is, but I find it's better to bring in the iron. I, I, for me, I think this is probably the hardest part, rolling this seam and getting it so you want to have your, your seam right here on the edge to the best of your ability. Kind of roll it with your fingers. The kids may need a little help with this part. I noticed that if I warm up my ironing board, la -di -da -di -da -di -da -di -da, get that nice and warm, then when I put this down, it seems to warm up the fabrics and I find it easier. I don't know if it holds that bottom piece. I just find it easier to roll the pillowcase that way. Then I can give it some nice, good steam. Just kind of, you know, do a little money, money, money thing with your fingers. Just roll them a little back and forth. 
This is another spot, if you don't get it just right, you'll want to take a larger seam allowance in our next sewing because you want to make sure you're getting all of that seam and thread. You don't want it sticking out anywhere. Pay particular attention up here so that you go in there and pull out any extra. It likes to fold and hide up there. Yeah, rolling out the seams, it's the worst. Now they have the little rollers and stuff and like you can do that, but I don't know. You'd still have to come and hit it with the iron. And don't forget we did two of them. So what we did on the side or the bottom, we gotta do on the opposite one too. Now I am making these to sell, so I wouldn't do these things, but you can either have a little bowl of water to get your fingers moist, that helps too, or you know, Many, many crafters do it. You lick your fingers before you do it. But nowadays, that's not definitely not something you would want to do. So I just roll it all out. Nice, good steam so it stays. If you're having troubles with it, it won't stay. You know, the steam does a good job for me. But you can use pins or clips. We are on the last stretch, guys. We did all the hard work. The last part is one good sewing line it does Stephanie it makes a huge difference I, I haven't done it without pressing it I can't imagine because a lot of the times it looks like the top of a heart it all you know caves in like that okay you know you got a good sewing machine too because like this Juki it has a metal motor in it your regular little brothers and singers and stuff are much lighter to move around let's see Thank you, Becky. Okay. Don't ask me. I don't, I don't know nothing, Stephanie. I don't know nothing. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start on the cuff. Make, okay, now I don't know this one for a fact. I almost made this mistake. But make sure you're sewing on the side that has the seam and not on the side that is all just fabric and there's no seam over there. You're not gonna hurt too much doing it that way. You're gonna have something weird on the front of it, of course, but make sure you're on the side with the seam on it. I am going to switch to a 3 8 inch and drop my back down 2.0 stitch length because I wanna make sure that I'm going to... Oh, thanks Tracy. If I iron the right side first before I flip it, I'll set my seams and it'll make it, okay, I'll try that on the next one. I still have two more that I'll make after the live stream is over. I cut out three of them thinking I was gonna make it in 15 minutes, but I forgot I like to talk. So again, I'm gonna start down about a half an inch or so, not measuring it or anything. Pull my threads to the top so I don't have that weird, ugly bird's nest. Backstitch. Okay, so, Remember, your presser foot is your third hand. Always use that for you. Make sure your needle's down when you stop so nothing shifts. When you're doing this, you can feel that seam right along here. You just want to make sure your needle is at least an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch beyond where you can feel that previous seam. And then just stitch down. I don't pin or anything since I pressed it. It seems to hold it nice and neat. Again, go slow when you're going over from the cuff to the regular, especially if you have that accent fabric. Threads. Let me get rid of this guy. You know, I like these little snips, but half the time I pick them up, they end up getting in the wrong position and they don't clip. But I have them all over the place in the house. through here I can see a, it's another a smidge of the seam where I didn't get it it's not perfectly like this one of them's over a little bit so I'm gonna go to the inside of the one there so that extra is over there that way I know I'm covering up the seam hopefully and there's no threads it's one of those things where if it happens to you you'll know what I'm talking about
again, you can go all the way off to the end, but it just looks so much neater if you just go down and then pivot. So make sure you're not sewing any of this other pillowcase while it's underneath your foot. Keep it all out of the way. sewing these I was worried you know don't take a half inch seam I'm, I'm just so used to like scrimp and save and don't waste things and make sure everything is nice and neat you want to take a bigger seam you want to go ahead and use that little extra it is not going to be crazy noticeable on the inside of your stocking uh, your pillowcase I got Christmas stockings on the brain today sew down the, the folded side Becky yeah well Sometimes, like I said, you just get chatting with people. I'll be talking to people on Messenger or talking in text and stuff or watching movies, and I just will get sidetracked. So look at that. Everything's nice and neat. It does, I mean, it's not a lot, right? It's just a little bit of a seam there. Let's see what we got. It's, yeah, it's three-eighths. It's just under half an inch. You can take this and go ahead and press and set your stitches like we would in quilting, but I haven't done that. I'm going to press it in a second anyways. Thank you, Carol. Again, you want to poke out your corners gently. And then the other part, you still have to press here, which is annoying. Now, in our corners, let me see if I can pull one out. Remember, we're going to have that extra bulk from the French seam. We got all this extra right here. I try to make it go around the corner and give it a little bit of a pleat like that. Let them just lay as best as they can. Otherwise you're just going to end up with corners that poke, don't poke out very well. You can just, again, roll it with your fingers and get them to stick out the best you can. Darn thread. Look at that. Ooh, fancy. I don't see any threads yet. You could take it apart and do it again if you had to. And I would only do that as if I had the actual fabric sticking out, you're going to have a few threads here and there. Just go ahead and trim them and realize, you know, it happens. It's, it just, it's not that you did anything wrong, it just happens. And on the next one, maybe make a little wider of your seam on the last time, or go ahead and trim all those little threads off. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, let's, let's test out who told us that we should iron it first. Let's do that. Let's see if that helps. I just heard the tip and I said I was going to try it and then I ignored you, right? Give it a good steamy. That's one of the good things about sewing with everyone else too. You can catch all those little extra tips because you can only learn based on your mistakes and stuff like that. Thank you guys. I think, okay. I just did a little bit of work, right? I did very basic, basic skills. French seams is a little bit fancy sounding, and you think, oh no, I can't do that. But look, that wasn't hard at all, right? That was super simple. And if it scares you away from doing pillowcases, then just serge or overcast them, and you'll just have a little, you'll have a seam on the inside. Go to the store, look at the pillowcases there, and I bet you half of them have a seam anyway. I haven't bought pillowcases in a while, so I don't know what they look like. Okay. Give this a little heat. Then we're just going to press. I want to press the whole thing. I will still stay away from the top cuff, but I want to just go ahead and give it a nice little. Now mine. Okay, guys, you're going to see this. Oh, no, mine weren't exactly perfect. I'm off a little bit close to an eighth of an inch. You know what? It's going to be fine because if you didn't see this, you may not even notice it unless... Now, I've had problems with them in the past, so I will look at pouches to see if they line up. Just because I think it's so exciting when they do. I'm like, yay, the, the creator got it to line up perfectly. Awesome. But most people don't look. 
I've had a few of my things where I've sent them as gifts and they're like, oh, my mother, the seamstress, tried to look at all of it and tried to pick it apart, but you did a great job. And I'm like, yay, you didn't see my mistakes. Woohoo. We're going to hide them all on the inside and no one's going to see them. Okay, ironing at first it didn't give me 100%. It's super easy, but it did make it a lot easier. So that is a great tip. Thank you. Go ahead and iron it before you turn it right side out. It does make a difference. I mean, a, something you don't like to do is going to be something you don't like to do. When I serge the seam seams, I sew the complete side first and sew the cuff last in case it's a serge seam. That makes sense. And then just give it a nice press. And then realize that if you made it yesterday and you fold it all up nice and neat so it didn't have any issues, when you take it out the next day, you're going to see all those fold marks. Sometimes you have a little bit of a flip here or it gets tucked under or something. Just go ahead and move it around. Now seriously, now, if, okay, let's say we were a very beginner and we just started and it took us about an hour to make this pillowcase. And I think that's great as a beginner. If it takes you an hour the first time you've ever sewn a pillowcase, then I think you're doing an amazing job. But I bet you on your fourth pillowcase, you'll probably knock it down to about 20 minutes or less. See that? Beautiful. These can be made in any size. You just have to measure it for your pillow. Thank you, thank you everyone. I like to go ahead and fold it in a third like this. And that makes a nice little tiny package. Or, I, I do like the idea of using a pillowcase when you're giving a quilt or any type of gift giving occasion. I don't know why, but I like to fold it up to the cuff. And then I take this one just below the cuff. So when it comes over here, I don't want that sticking out at the top. Look at that. We are all done. Doing something for the first time always takes longer. Yes, because you don't know what you're doing. You haven't gone through the steps. You haven't figured out a shortcut. You, you're not really sure what's going on. Thank you, thank you. So remember, the pillowcases are in the shop if there's anything more and more. Jody, we've already gone for an hour and 20 minutes. You're not getting any more today. I do not have any idea what we're doing for the next live stream. Is there anything you guys would like to see? So suggestions now on the live would be great. And if you're watching this as a replay, leave it down in the comments, please. If there's a tip, trick, technique, project that you'd like to see, I'll add it to my list and choose something fun. Majority usually rules unless I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, because like there's like, okay, I'm not a painter, so we can't paint, right? But if we're going to do something sewing-wise, I can do that. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, so they're all in the shop. I have uh, lots of things. I was looking in the shop the other day, and there's 14 pages of things. I was thinking, I hope, it's like, toot your own horn you don't really want to push yourself out there but you want to and I think I just have so many things in my shop I want to go ahead and do a video where I just take all the stuff in the shop and just go through and just chit chat with you and show you things one at a time so that you see tote bag did I do I did a needle book with my patrons I don't know if I did a needle book with you guys or not tote bag is on the list um if we do the tote bag as a live stream, I know for sure we are definitely going to take two plus hours. Thank you. Tote, tote bags, it's, it's a process to it. I will definitely be doing that as a regular video next year, but I don't know. Let me see. When, what are we looking at? December 5th and the 19th. What about stockings? Do you guys want to do Christmas stockings? We can do stockings before Christmas. That would give us time. Anything else we can make? I want to make those bowl cozies, but I don't know if I have all the supplies with it. All right, great, Stephanie, because there's just so many things in the shop, and sometimes I wonder if Art Fire, just the way it's set up, even on Etsy, you have to go through pages and pages of stuff, and a lot of you guys are new, and some of you have forgotten, and now that I have, you got the 15% off code in Art Fire, just use the coupon code 
2020 through the end of the year, I have stockings on my mind, that's right. So stockings will be good. We made the, I have the stockings, there's a video. If you look up stockings on my, Christmas stockings on my channel, I showed you guys how to put a zipper in them and how so you could like tuck money into it and stuff like that and have it as a little coin thing. Yes, I hope everyone has an amazing Thanksgiving. I am going to go and hang out with my kids. We are in our own little bubble. Those vinyl candy bags. Sue, don't start with me yet. We're not doing those yet. You have to wait till next year. I bought the vinyl, but I have to go to the store and buy candy and stuff first, so we have to wait. Thank you guys for letting Frida talk all the time. Poor Frida. Bowl cozies. That I definitely want to do that. I just need to check, Carol, to make sure... I don't, is it just, because it goes in the microwave, so it's just cotton batting, right? Cotton fabric, cotton batting, cotton thread. I never put mine in the microwave. Someone made them for me, and I use them all the time, but I didn't make them myself, so I'm afraid to put them in the microwave, even though I know they're safe. It's just my quirk, you know. Plus, I don't like, I don't want the bowl, does the bowl cozy come out of the microwave hot? So I take, I take pot holders. And I take my bowl out of the microwave and I put it in the cozy that's sitting on the stove waiting for me. Baked potato bags. Sue, those are such a high controversy. I haven't decided if I want to put them on my channel or not. Because sometimes if people don't follow the directions properly, if you use the cotton batting that has scrim in it, it will catch on fire. And I don't want to have anyone coming back at me and being responsible. Yeah. Exactly. The same thing with those potato chip bags. So I guess if we do the bowl cozies, we can do the potato chip bags because it's the same theory. You have to be very, very careful. As long as I repeat that over and over again, you have to be careful. Those potato chip, those baked potato bags catch on fire. If you put it in the microwave, it has to be 100% cotton. The, there's, there's, um, I use the warm and white with no scrim batting because the scrim is like a glue or a fusible interfacing type thing that holds all the batting together. The batting I use has been needle punched together so there's no glue anywhere so those things can catch on fire. Oh it's not hot taking it out of the microwave? Thanks Helen. I was really wondering about the bowl cozies because and also it's, it's like a personal thing. Someone made me bowl cozies and it's amazing. It's like this really nice big bowl but I have my soup bowls. I have tall bowls and they're not you know wide so it's kind of I have to fold it and all that to make it fit, so I do want to make bulk. Okay, we have two. We're going to do December 5th and December 19th. We will do stockings and bowl cozies. Let me write that down, please. Because we all know already, Robin's brain is mush. Christmas stockings, bowl cozies, and later on, Sue wants... Vinyl candy pouches and tater bags. Look, there's there's how many Fridays? We've got four Fridays in December, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Oh, yeah. I want to make some because I eat the, like, the pints and stuff because you dairy-free ice cream, the biggest one you can get is like a pint. Stocking, yeah, we'll do stockings first because you want to be able to hang them out and use them. I did want to make stockings this year. I was actually looking different things. I have some Christmas jelly rolls and stuff like that. So we can make a variety of stockings. I'll probably do the same thing as usual. I'll make a whole bunch ahead of time and then we'll go. Now next Friday is the day after Thanksgiving. I haven't decided what type of video I'm going to put up. Maybe on that one I'll do the video about what's in the shop because most people are going to it's not a normal Thanksgiving, but people will be out possibly shopping online or Black Friday. Some people did travel, so I don't want to have a I don't want to have a really good video, a nice tutorial that everyone's going to miss because, you know, time passes and you get watching other videos. So we'll see what I do there and what what I come up with then. But thank you guys for hanging out with me. Everyone, you're going to head back over to Mom and Pop and hang out with them. Celebrate Pop's birthday and their 20,000 20, subscribers. We are getting close. I'm at 27.7 thousand subscribers here. We need just a little under 300 more to pop us up to 28,000. So if you haven't subscribed or if YouTube has unsubscribed you because YouTube does that occasionally, 
make sure you're still subscribed hit that little subscribe button and i'll see you guys next time thank you for the ideas thank you for sewing along with me be safe enjoy your thanksgiving and remember any food you eat any calories consumed on a holiday don't count you will not get any extra pounds from them because they're special calories right bye guys